Good morning. Happy Friday. You have me alone, a little solo. This is 10 tips to upgrade your morning. These are things that you don't have to do all in one morning. You could pick and choose and put them where you want, but these are things that I try to do as much as possible. It's like the 80 20 rule. I try to do a lot of them 80% of the time. And I thought I would put together my top 10 favorite things that have really transformed my morning. I have kids, so I know how it is for parents in the morning. It's wild and you just got to hold on tight. But here's a couple of little hacks and tricks that I've done that have changed my day. First thing first, I try to wake up 20 to 30 minutes before my kids wake up. And this gives me time to sit in silence. And whether that's just like laying in my bed and digesting the day and like downloading what I want the day to look like, that's a meditation to me. Sometimes I'll put my legs up on the wall and do like a Joe Dispenza meditation. Sometimes I'll go outside on my deck and just listen to the birds and turn on Melissa Wood Health for 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll turn on Wim Hof just like something that really starts to wake me up slowly and nicely and feels good on my nervous system. And being able to sit in silence for 20 to 30 minutes before my kids wake up is absolutely amazing. Before I meditate, I take my mouth tape off with a little bit of mist so it doesn't pull my skin. I get my water, I get my red light mask, and I do my meditation. Another thing that I always do is I don't wake up to an alarm. So instead of an alarm... I do a hatch alarm clock and it's not an alarm clock even. It just like wakes you up slowly with light. I love this because the setting to wind down is absolutely amazing. There's a red light setting. So it winds you down with a meditation and then it wakes you up with like a brighter yellow light that's not super jarring. And this is how I wake up every morning. I don't want to wake up to an annoying cortisol sound. I just don't like I don't want it. I think it's a bad way to wake up. I don't want to hear my phone in the morning. So that's another tip is try to invest in a hatch alarm clock. I'm telling you, they are the best. The third tip to a beautiful morning is to open the shades right when you wake up. This is going to signal to your body that it's time to get going. There's nothing worse than just like laying in bed in the dark when it's time to get up for the day. So I immediately open the shades and this this gets my brain like activated, like it's time to go. Another thing that I do every single morning is I make the bed. So I'm usually doing this when my kids are awake. They actually help me. It's become like a fun thing for us. And I think making the bed not only is a good example for my kids, because I think it shows like do your chores, like show up, be disciplined, do the same thing every day, have a routine. I also just feel for my own self that it sets up my day to have like a clean space. I like having my bed made. I think it's also a good way to habit stack. So I'll listen to an audible book while I'm making the bed. The fifth tip is do not look at your phone when you wake up. So I have purposeful rules around my phone that I have thought out and thought about a lot. And that is I bookend my day with no phone. The only reasons I'm looking at my phone is to turn on a meditation quickly or to put on an audible book. I sleep with my phone on airplane mode the entire night. So I'll turn the airplane mode off and then quickly just go to a meditation, like I said, or to an audible book, something that's learning. But I don't look at my phone. I don't look at my text. I don't look at my email. I don't look at social media. I don't even want to look at all that until like 10 o'clock. I I literally just don't want it in my ether. I don't want to be reactive to what everyone else needs. The next thing I do is I lay my clothes out the night before so I know exactly what I'm wearing. So it's quick, quick, quick. I like to feel cute when I'm working out. I have been working my ass off in the gym and I do a workout every single day, regardless if it's Pilates or walking or Melissa Wood Health, or p or working out with my trainer, or lifting, I make it a priority to work out. And I like to do it before 12 o'clock. I don't care what time it is. It could be whatever. I just don't like to go too early, and I don't like to go too late. So I think that this is another 
great thing to get your blood flowing, working out and setting those clothes out so you know exactly what you're wearing. Another tip here is I don't do coffee right away. I wait for 90 minutes to have my coffee. So I have an order of how I like my drinks. I'll wake up, I'll drink a bunch of water, then I'll have electrolytes with lemon. It's like a water concoction. You can see it on my TikTok. And then I'll have my Keon mango amino acids. I think you can use code skinny mixed with live momentous creatine. And I do a scoop of that and I froth it up in my water bottle and I am good to go. The next thing I do is then make my coffee and I do like two inches of raw milk frothed up with Keon coffee. It's the best because it doesn't mold and I have my coffee for the day. So that's kind of the order that I do my drinks in. And that really helps to know exactly what I'm drinking every day. I know that sounds weird, but the thing that I like about my routine is I know exactly where to stand and how to stand and when to do it. And it's become really easy. It hasn't become overwhelming at all. Something else that's helped with puffiness in the morning is getting ice on my face, whether that's sticking my face in ice or using the ice roller or doing cold plunge. I just love cold. If there's any way that you can get cold in the morning, it's an absolute game changer. You can dry brush your body. I can only get this in if my kids are asleep. So if I've meditated for 20 minutes and I have like 10 minutes extra, I'll dry brush my entire body and then I'll hop in a freezing cold three minute shower. With kids, you have to be flexible. Sometimes my kids wake up at the same time as me. Sometimes I have 45 minutes. But I have like a rhythm and a cadence of how I respond if they're awake and how I respond if they're not awake. I think it's really helpful to almost write down how you're going to show up in the morning when your kids wake up with you and how you can respond if you have 30 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour. I just think it's so much easier for our brains to lay it out on a piece of paper. Another thing that I do every single morning that helps so much is I write in my planner. And in my planner are specific prompts. The one I use is on shopskinnyconfidential.com. And these are the prompts that I've been doing for the last, God, like four to five years to build my business. It's one page. If, If you're a mom and you're busy, this is the quickest page of your life. I'm not asking you to write three full pages. I'm not asking you to, you know, write down 65 things you're grateful for. It's super quick. And it just gets all of your thoughts out on paper. I really like these prompts because it also, again, is setting up your day. So it's like the book you're reading of the day. It's the podcast you're listening to of the day. It's two things you're grateful for, your intention, and then a list of the top six things that need to get done. And this is really going to help you to prioritize. Something else I do in the mornings that really sets the mood is I put on a calming jazz. I've been doing Spanish classic guitar right now on Spotify, and it's such a lovely way to wake up. And also, it's really nice for my kids to wake up in like just good vibes. I don't like to turn the lights on super bright. I love a dimmer. You know that about me. Uh, So I dim the lights for my kids, put some incense on, put some music on, just try to make it peaceful in our home. And then the other thing I do is I try to create routine for my kids. So I do like a specific order. I like when my kids eat breakfast and then they get dressed and then they brush their teeth and they sort of like know where to stand. And and this helps things move smoother, which is awesome. It becomes a little militant for the kids, which is nice because they know what they're doing. The tantrums can occur. We all know a tantrum and you just got to like go with it. You got to be stoic. You got to just let them have their tantrum and and hold space. Not every morning is going to be perfect. And then the other thing that I do that is absolutely game changing to my mornings is I get sunlight in the morning. And I've noticed, I know this is so crazy that it helps balance my hormones. So after my daughter goes to school, I'll take my son, I'll put him in the stroller and I will take a walk. And the first 15 minutes of that walk, I am doing an activation by Mimi. We just had her on the podcast. There's a great one on our podcast for free. It's like becoming your best self. I will just walk and listen to that. Or I'll put on a meditation and just walk and just collect my thoughts. And after I do that, I'll get on my phone on my notes app and I'll just voice note a bunch of stuff that I need to do. So I have this list on my phone that's like very, very detailed. Everything from take clothes to the dry cleaner, to text back dad, to, 
email, blah, blah, blah about this project to product ideas is in this notes app. So I have this ongoing notes app. And then I also have my planner of what to do in the day. I think the planner helps because it makes you focus on the micro. And then the notes app helps because it helps you focus on the macro. Basically, if you want to upgrade your morning, I think it really comes down to the simple things. Getting light in your eyes, opening the shades the first thing in the morning, getting those electrolytes in before your coffee, waiting 90 minutes for coffee. This is absolutely incredible. You can go listen to Andrew Huberman all about why it's important to wait a little bit and moving your body. So taking a walk, working out, getting that movement in early in the morning. And then most importantly, and this is my hot tip, is stay off your phone. If you're waking up and laying in bed and just like scrolling through social media every single morning, it's taking away energy and capacity for you to be doing something towards your goals. So you're just like invested in other people's lives as opposed to really pushing forward towards what you need to be doing. And all these little habits and routines that you have in the morning and at night really help set up a successful day. I think of my day like a sandwich and the morning is the bread. And you got to make sure that you are purposeful and thoughtful and strategic about how you set up your sandwich. So those are some quick ways to take your morning to the next level. You don't have to implement all of these. Just pick a couple, like cherry pick a couple and implement them and let me know how it goes. And any time that you can get a space where you can be quiet or silent and just think is a move. Thinking time is underrated, whether you're walking and doing a meditation or an activation or whether you're just like laying in bed with your feet up on the wall. Take space for yourself because I notice when I have space for myself, I show up as the best mother, wife, and businesswoman I can be. Like if I don't have space, it doesn't work. On that note, make sure you guys are subscribed to the Him and Her newsletter. It's weekly and monthly. So weekly, you'll get Michael and my tips. And monthly, you'll get all of our favorites that we bought. So like books, health, wellness, all the things that we've purchased and that we're really liking And also make sure you're following at TSC Podcast.